lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. You sounded so down when you came in today. <laughs> it's been a long day. I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel great now. That's, that's good. So I'm ready, ready for a big podcast here. yeah i don't i don't generally sleep very well and this morning it was uh it was really raining when i woke up actually it was really raining almost the entire day today. yeah i was gonna say dude the amount of water i passed like so it wasn't raining on the way here like mm-hmm. the sun's out now and everything yeah but the ditches are full yeah everything's full <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> um well so i listen to uh rain sounds to go to sleep Oh, so you got live entertainment then? Yeah, it wasn't raining when I went to sleep last night, so yeah. I had, of course, the like the YouTube rain sounds with the black screen, yeah, running. And um, so I woke up this morning. I mean, I woke up like three times between then and this morning. But yeah. um, so I woke up this morning. I rolled over. I looked at the clock, and I was like, oh, "Okay, time to get up." And I, I, you know, I stopped the rain sounds on the YouTube, and I sat and listened to the rain for a moment. And then suddenly, like magic, it was 45 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> you fell back asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly did. I even dreamed and, and uh, so forth in that in-between time. And then when I woke up, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to be one, late. <laughs> uh, that's one of those days where you call in, man. It's like, dude, I'm sleeping good. Yeah. <laughs> can't give this up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this I, doesn't happen every day. <laughs> I can't, yeah, I wish I could do that. Oh God, that would be that would be such an understanding office. Well, you know I got, got I don't sleep and and I was really sleeping this morning, so I, I just I didn't come in. Yeah. Hey man. That, <laughs> that's the dream. That is the dream. I could I could probably almost get away with that, but yeah. not quite. I would feel bad about it. Yeah. I wouldn't actually feel as bad about it as I would be made to feel about it, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, but um, but I did get a, like a nice 45 extra minutes there. That was, hey. uh, it was it passed so fast. Yeah, there's nothing like the rain, man. It was raining when I got up this morning, too. But I had to, and that was at 630 the, or 5.30 this morning when I got up. Yeah. It was poor, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. I, um, <laughs> it was good. Might be a minute before we get into any actual content here. Um, so, I, when I had to go get shots today, yeah. and uh, and it was really I, like I kept waiting because I don't have a specific time. Like it's not an appointment. It's like you just go in and yeah, go. we're yeah. here. We're here from eight till eleven thirty or whatever, and you know just come in anytime. Yeah, and uh, so I usually like to go around nine because it's like late enough that people aren't there that are going before work and um it's early enough that people aren't like at lunch or something going in and or you know taking an early lunch to go in it's like the least number of people it's like going to walmart at 3 a.m you know ideal time yeah yeah. um that magic uh, window (laughs) exactly where i get to be almost the only person sitting there yeah um and uh but i kept waiting today because it was raining so hard and uh, i was like ah it's gonna slack off and he and then I finally gave up. It I was like, it's not, it's not <laughs> yeah. going to slack off. And so when I was announcing that I was leaving um, at my office, uh, was, you know, one of the guys offered me an umbrella, which I, I keep an umbrella, but it was in my car. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, and actually, I do have a like a crappy one that I that I keep in my office just in case I get stuck. But yeah. I said, oh, well, you know, I appreciate it. I I have one. But the other thing is that I always get wetter. Like trying to put the umbrella away when I'm getting in my car. Yeah. Like umbrellas are from the car to something, yeah. not from something to the car. Because when I get to the car, like the putting the umbrella away while I'm standing there in the rain, putting the umbrella away before I get in. Like I haven't figured out this trick. There's, there must be a trick to it. But <laughs> you have I end to up use the umbrella to get yourself into the car and then put the umbrella out and shut it. Yeah, but that doesn't really work. Uh, I, I I wouldn't know because I don't use umbrellas. Yeah. So. <laughs> no. Um. I. I don't have a rain jacket at all. I don't use a rain jacket (laughs) either. I just get wet. Yeah. So I just walked out there and got wet uh, on the way to Like a man. Yeah. But on the, (laughs) like once I got to the place, I pulled out my umbrella and I used it to get into the building. Uh And then, but it was raining so hard. Like it it had somehow doubled (laughs) 
during yeah. the time that I was in there and it was already raining really hard when I got there. So I was kind of amazed at the the level of downpour that we were experiencing when I left. Yeah. And usually I would just walk out there with my umbrella in my hand, which makes me look really stupid. Walk, like walking through the rain with my umbrella all, you know, tied up <laughs> tied in up. my hand. Yeah. Um, but it was raining so bad. I was like, Oh man, like I was getting wet when I walked out the door and they have this huge, like awning yeah. and so forth. That and was, I was coming under. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm using the umbrella. Like <laughs> I would be, I, I would have to go home and like throw my clothes in the dryer otherwise. Yeah. And so I, you know, opened up the umbrella and I walked out of the car and I was still getting a little wet because there was, it was really heavy wind too. So it was like blowing in from the side and my feet were getting wet and you know, yeah. and like everything below the knees was soaked. Uh, but then I got to the car and I like I opened it up and I threw all my stuff in it while I was still holding the umbrella over my head. And then I had to do that part yeah and so i like i sat down with the umbrella up and then i folded up the umbrella and then the umbrella wouldn't fold quite right like it kept wanting to pop back out and so i'm like fighting with the umbrella in the meantime like not only is the rain pouring on me but all the rain that was getting on top of the umbrella was now falling on me too because (laughs) you you know like i couldn't get it and I was soaking wet <laughs> by the time I you got the umbrella. You should have just thrown the umbrella in the parking lot. <laughs> I, you're just probably dumped right. it, man. <laughs> yeah, forget it. It's too late for this one. All right. <laughs> this one's gone. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Anyway. Now you know for next time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then, of course, by the time I got to my office, which is literally like three minutes away from the the um, place where I get my shots, uh, it had really slacked off quite a bit. It was like barely raining when I pulled into my park. Should have gave it another hour. Yeah, I should, it would only take me five minutes, actually. Like, <laughs> right. If I'd have given it another five minutes, I would have walked out in a relative not well, relatively light rain. And then I could have left the umbrella folded up the whole time. There you go. <laughs> Wouldn't have had this problem. Yeah. If only I could see into the future. There you go. But that is completely unrelated to anything that we plan to talk about today. And actually, yeah. we didn't really have anything planned to talk about today. We didn't have a whole lot today. Um, it just became a, hey, let's have a little discussion about some things. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Where do you want to start? It doesn't matter to me. We start with the big news of the day. Let's, okay. Let's do that. What is that? Um, Liz Cheney did not win her primary. I'm surprised that that's news. It's well, yeah. It, apparently, she got slaughtered. Yeah. <laughs> so, which is, as far as I'm concerned, more power to the people, man. Like, yeah. I mean, I just, I, so, and I just, I'm just going to be honest here. I didn't realize until recently that that's uh, Dick Cheney's daughter. Yeah, I. I don't when know you how said I that didn't... to me earlier. I was like, how could that be? Because I'm pretty sure that I have said that on the podcast, literally sitting across the table from you. Apparently I didn't pick it up because <laughs> I I did not realize that. Yeah. Um. So I, and it just boggles my mind that that person could be. I mean, who would vote for her? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is some name recognition. I guess there are probably some still people out there that still respect Dick Cheney. Well, I mean, uh, Wyoming is definitely like a very red state. And so I just don't understand how she got through the primary the first time. Yeah. Because, I mean, his policies have just been horrible for the country and everybody mm-hmm. knows it. Like it's like people like the Iraq Iraq war is like a black flag on history for as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And I, I think that he's widely regarded at this point to just be like a terrible person. Yeah. So how does his daughter win? It blows my mind. I don't know. Um, but here we are. Yeah. So, but um, the thing I wanted to kind of mention, so obviously, so she lost her. So when she done her, um, was it the consolation speech or whatever? When concession. You, concession. Concession speech whenever yeah, she lost. Yeah, it's no consolation. No consolation. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, when she made that, she really hinted hard that she's going to run for president. Against, oh, really? Yes. So, <laughs> like, like, I mean, she talked a, a bunch about, like, now the real work begins and that type mm-hmm. of thing. And just hitting hard. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Because... Because who is going to vote for her? Well, the, she, she has gone against the Republican Party to the point that I don't think that there would be a whole lot of Republicans that would vote for her. Even the, the ones that hate Trump, which are going to be the only ones that yeah. would like her, I would yeah. think. Um. She'd almost be better off running for the Democrat nomination, but why would any Democrat vote for her over somebody who has always been a Democrat? Well, 
and so my understanding is is she's like a pretty hardcore Republican, like as far as just like her positions. I saw something where she voted like ninety five percent with Trump when Trump was in office. Oh, really? Like, I mean, she was she was. I don't know that that's the hardcore Republican position. Trump's. I I don't stance. know, but I mean, like, but. like she's. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. Like, she's very very pro life. Um. They listed off a bunch of stuff the other yeah. days. The reason I'm trying to go, like, I don't know remember that she's really down. any of these things, honestly. Well, I she's think probably she's, not, uh, but she's postured herself as yeah. these things, is what I would say. Um, but she, she's also a neocon. Like, yeah. Well, it, yeah. She like all right. A couple of things. Um, as I recall, and I could be wrong about this. As I recall, I'm pretty sure that she like criticized John McCain for not being pro torture enough. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and could see that, you know, of course her father like yeah. was a big part of the, well, he was part of the interrogate, the enhanced interrogation. Yeah. And yeah. All getting of that. that pushed through. Yeah. Um, or legally justifying it, you know, yeah. like getting people to legally justify it and so forth when he was vice president. Um, and, uh, she also in her initial election, like, totally threw her sister under the bus. Her sister is, uh, her sister is gay. Yeah. And, um, like some question came up about, uh, you know, about gay rights or something. I can't remember. And she like completely threw her sister under the bus. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it, for, for politics. Yeah. Yeah. Politics over, you know, family. family. Yeah. Which is, I mean, yeah. You're, I mean, you're just talking about horrible people here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't, I mean, I could be wrong. She might just be so terrible. She might be even more terrible than I think and actually, like, hate her sister because of her, her, <laughs> uh, you know, sexual preference or whatever. But yeah. um, I imagine that that's not the case. She just saw her saw as an, an impediment. Opening. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. yeah. You know, to getting a Republican nomination in Wyoming. Anyway. Yeah. Like, um. So not, it, and that's the thing that has amazed me. You know, I talked before on the podcast about the lady at work who, you know, praised Liz Cheney as like, you know, f an honest Republican or whatever, yeah. um, which is all really, and it, that's, I guess the, the statements that you hear from the anti-Trumpers on both sides Yeah, that just, I don't know. I can't, they're just they don't really so infuriate blinded. me. They're just so, they're blinded by hate. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the way I see it is they're just, I mean, and there's a term for it, Trump derangement syndrome. And yeah. a lot of these people, I mean, they just have it. There's just, they can't see past, they, they think that this guy is just such a unique evil and they just mm -hmm. can't get past it. And I, I mean, obviously we've talked about it agnosium on the podcast. I mean, I just don't, I don't understand it and I don't yeah. agree with it. <laughs> I don't like him either. But yeah. I just don't think he's any worse than any other. He's of not them. unique, though. Yeah. 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 They're all evil. They're all evil. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Like, um, so. I mean, think of the think of the things that George W. Bush did while he was in office. Um, you know, lying us into the Iraq War. Uh, the letting actually, and you know, some of this actually could probably go back to Dick Cheney's decisions. Honestly, I yeah. don't know what was going on behind the closed doors, like who was actually proposing this stuff. But that, you know, the the Bush administration let Osama bin Laden go yeah. at Tora Bora. They could have stopped him from crossing the border into Pakistan, and they chose not to. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, you know, there was... Because they knew what they could do. What they, they had just been given a gift. Yeah. Well, and it's the same thing that's going on in Ukraine now, where they're saying, well, we can't have this war in too soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, we don't want a short war. We want yeah. a long war because we've got things to do. We've got, yep. you know, an agenda to pursue. And if the war ends too quickly, then we're not able to do it, which is really... Just, I it, mean, it's like there couldn't one of those be highest most levels of vile evil. people. Yeah, like exactly. I mean, those, these people couldn't be more vile. Yeah, you know. Um, and then you know, of course, Obama with the expanding the drone war in the way he did, making it so impersonal. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, incredibly effective in some ways. But then he's also the guy that um that okayed the assassination of Anwar al awlaki and his sixteen year old yeah. son. Yeah. A couple of weeks later. Yeah. And. You know, regardless what you think about all of, you know, all of the people involved with the jihadist movements and so forth, like 
these are two people that were American citizens. Yeah. They are entitled, like, and they weren't, like, you know, it's one thing if you go to try and arrest the guy and he pulls a gun on you and then well, he gets yeah. shot, you know. But, like, anonymously dropping a bomb on him from thousands of feet. Yeah. Um, because of his in, his alleged involvement. And I'm not going to say he wasn't involved. I mean, it's pretty yeah. clear that he was. But, I mean, like, he was motivating but people he, to to yeah. perform violent acts. But that's another one of those things that I have an issue with anyway. Because everybody's responsible for their own acts. Yeah. He, like... Thoughts can't be crimes. So even if you're out there preaching violence because of some ideological issue, the people that perform violence as a response to that, that's their problem. Like that, yeah. they're responsible for those actions. Like the guy who's talking about it isn't responsible for the actions of those other people. They made choices. Yeah. Oh, I wholeheartedly agree. And I'm getting <laughs> and totally so many, off topic there. So there many but the parallels. point is that like he was due a trial. Yeah, absolutely. As an American citizen, he is guaranteed the right to trial to defend himself and and so forth. Like this is yeah, this is a really important. This is one of those those first ten amendments to the Constitution yeah. that we call the Bill of Rights, <laughs> right? Where you get to have a trial that you don't get summary judgment from the government to assassinate you to kill you. Yeah. Well, you're you're just assuming though that that piece of paper actually means anything. Well, I mean, it means an example, something. It just examples doesn't, like this is well, that's just it. Examples like this are why it's it doesn't. Yeah. You know? um, well, I still think that it means something. It yeah. it may not legally mean something, but it has a symbolism that's important. I yeah. still think. Oh, I love the document. I'm just yeah. saying it doesn't. It's not very enforceable. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, we've allowed it to be that way. Yeah. Oh, so absolutely. We've, we've let it go um, as a as a people. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, like all of these, you know, and it wasn't, wasn't it under Obama that they, um, completely got rid of, uh, um, any kind of requirement that charges be brought even against American citizens before they're held indefinitely. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm pretty I mean, sure it was in the Obama administration that they finally decided that American citizens could be held indefinitely without charges. Yeah. That's just insanity. And so, yeah, Trump is not a unique evil. Yeah, exactly. That kind of comes to the point. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, he's still got his thing going on about the Mar-a-Lago. Um, what raid. are we supposed to call it? No, no, no. <laughs> no uh, it's a raid, a, a legal search. <laughs> Legally justified Properly. search. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't know that there's that much more to say about that at this point than what we said last week. I mean, we know a little bit more, but not really. Yeah, there's still nothing, no bomb shells have came out. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, yeah. Um, And it just kind of amazes me. Like, I still think that they were just fishing. Yeah. Um, I did read an article in Newsweek that said that they, what they were really looking for was they were concerned that he had documentation that could be used to further his political career related to all the, the, you know, Russiagate stuff. Yeah. So, and I've heard some conspiracy theories too, that maybe, maybe he has something as far as, um, on somebody like or something in those documents mm -hmm. is something that he could use kind of like what you're saying, use politically or something like that. Yeah. But I just don't know how much I buy into all of that because if that is the case, like if he mm -hmm. did have something like that, I mean, it it seems to me he wouldn't need the actual hard documents at this point. Yeah, he could I just mean, make the claim. Yeah, well, he could not only could he just make the claim. I mean, surely he's taken pictures or made copies <laughs> of this stuff. I mean, he's had it for a year and a half. Yeah. Like, it's not like, I mean, he's had <laughs> access to this information for a long time. If he really had something legit, I think he could use it without having the physical documents. Yeah, and he may yet. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's I mean, I, possible. Too, I do but. look for some kind of. I, I I think that's a strong possibility that he did have something like that, and will use it at some point. I think that it would be incredibly interesting if it turned out that what they were really after was documentation that would um, incriminate members of the Justice Department or the intelligence communities for making up stuff about yeah the whole Russiagate scandal and that's it's that's 
very possible that that's what he had. Yeah. I mean, it's it would it would make sense. I mean, well, wasn't it wasn't it Andrew McCabe that got on sixty Minutes and said oh openly um, said that yeah I mean they were trying to 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 get him out of office any way they could. Yeah, that they had contemplated using the 25th Amendment and what they decided instead to do was to hamstring him with this investigation. Yeah, box him in with an investigation. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so it's not like that information isn't all kind of public knowledge anyway. Yeah. You know, which is what, kind of my point as far as like, what does he really need the documents for? You know, I mean, he can run around and make these claims. Yeah, he, all Twitter, he's got to do is yeah, he's got to pull the <laughs> clip from YouTube with Andrew McCabe saying it on 60 Minutes. Here's yeah. your conspiracy right, <laughs> right here. It's not really conspiracy if the FBI director says it, yeah. is it? I mean, he said I mean, it. Yeah, <laughs> um, so. uh, yeah. It, it's kind of the whole thing is is kind of incredible. But the thing that I'm still most amazed about is that they that there's such a fear of this guy. Yeah, like well, he was he was ineffectual. Yeah. As a president, as far as I can tell. I mean, there were a couple of things that he was able to accomplish. I mean, he did, in a sense, get us out of Afghanistan. He made a deal that they ended up not breaking, at yeah. the very least. Yeah. Um, of course, he could have done that like while he was still in office and made sure that it got done, but he didn't. Yeah. Um, he didn't. He he tried to get us out of Syria, but then they just hid troop numbers from him. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Um, he hired all the wrong people all over the place. Yeah, I, I don't think that, that there's very me, little of his agenda the, that actually got accomplished. That's the big failure to me as far as Trump's presidency. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, and not everything. There's plenty that he wanted to do that I disagreed with, but the stuff yeah. that he wanted to do that did that he didn't. He just hired the wrong people and mm -hmm. listened to the wrong people. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, and like I say, I, uh, who knows what's going to happen. I, if he runs again and wins, hopefully maybe he's learned something, but I have no reason to believe he has. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> take two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the second verse, same as the first. That's the, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. but, but people get so, another thing that just is so weird about it to me is the media gets so worked up in the frenzy over him and they're the reason he's where he's at. Like all they've got to do is quit talking about him. Yeah, that's also true. Um, but they can't do it. Like they, it's, it's the oddest thing to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I don't understand that. Well, it's, it's like almost like they can't because their ratings are dependent. They on, have, they've became very, and which is the reason they started talking about him in the first place mm -hmm. is because it was like, this guy gets clicks and listens, you yeah. know, and so, and they can't turn that off. <laughs> yep. They got to prove to their advertisers that people are, are paying attention. Yeah. Exactly. And if you stop paying attention to Donald Trump, then people stop paying attention to you, I guess. Yeah. yeah that's the um, way it is right now. It's kind of incredible. I, I, I think that he, this is, he's been like one of the most interesting presidents, not by what he actually accomplished in an office, but by what he exposed by being there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I think there were a lot of people that were woken up to, um, how, um, mendacious our media is and, um, and politicians in general, but particularly yeah. the media. Yeah. Well, the, the media and, I mean, just how crooked government is, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I think people already had a sense of that, but I, but I don't the think media that people... Yeah. Was, was something that was... Well, and media changed. I mean, he kind of ushered in, like, the a change in media as far as social media is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, he kind of rode that wave through, you know. Yeah. Um, well, he... He showed the that the mainstream media that they weren't the the conduit that they weren't the gatekeepers of information. Yeah. Um, that's one of the one of the great things that social media has done is make it possible for you know people like him to speak directly. Yeah. You know, people in power to speak directly to you know people in the lower levels. Yeah. Of of society or you don't whatever. you don't need every channel on tv to yeah. get your message out there you don't have to have tom brokaw agree to talk about whatever it is you want to talk about you yeah. can skip right past yep and, and go straight to the people um i mean there's obviously problems with that as well yeah. um but that is that is kind of a wonderful thing about social media is that that um you don't need somebody to translate for you you can just get it straight from the horse's mouth yeah um 
And he used that really effectively. Yeah. Um, Obama did too, frankly. Yeah. Uh, and he was probably the first really to use it. Uh, Trump used it in a very different way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and he's, he's a marketer. Like he, that's, yeah. that's what he does. Like, yeah. And he, he did that really well. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's the only thing he's good at, <laughs> but he does it well. <laughs> I have gotten a, a big kick recently about listening to the uh, the Sky News Australia clips about Trump and the things around Trump um, on oh, YouTube. Really? Like, they're usually pretty short. And there's like a, well, I, actually, I guess there's two things that they've been doing. Like, they, but it's mostly just kind of making fun of the way things are here oh, in yeah. the U.S. Yeah. I don't know that it's actually like pro Trump and anti Biden or anything like that. I think that they're just pointing out the absurdity of current American politics. <laughs> well, um, there's definitely plenty to point out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they have been like really riding Biden and not letting all the ridiculous things that Biden says go. Yeah. Um, th they're not covering up that stuff the way the mainstream media in the U S is, which makes it funny also. And they, they like pointedly make fun of this old man. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I, I've just been really enjoying. Yeah. I, I recommend you know just like <laughs> pulling up the Sky News Australia, uh, like searching Sky News Australia and Biden on yeah. YouTube. It, just there will check be it a out. bunch of like two to five minute clips that will probably be entertaining too. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I haven't yeah. seen it. Um, with no real good segue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we may as well just like jump into the other thing, which is. Um, a friend of mine asked me, actually, I guess it was just last night, um, why now he was talking like he started from rents and landlords. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about how people are like really up in arms about landlords all of a sudden again, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, this comes and goes. Yeah. And, uh, he said, you know, the, like the, the big thing was that the landlords should give their properties to the people who live in them to form little communes or whatever, um, and manage themselves instead of taking all this profit to, you know, to, um, give people something that they deserve. Everybody needs a place to live. And these landlords are just taking advantage of that fact and overcharging people and blah, blah, blah. That that's kind of <laughs> like the basis of it. Okay. And, and he's saying, his question to me was, why is it that people feel entitled to other people's property? Yeah, that's just insanity to me. Like, um, <laughs> and I, I kind of misunderstood the question at first because he was asking it in the context of, of socialism and communism. Like, why do people think that everybody, you know, people that believe in this stuff think that everybody else should follow along and do and believe in it, too, that. Yeah. And I, because I, the the answer to that is because that's the only way it works. Well, I, I was which actually, I would argue it doesn't work even then. Well, but yeah. the only way to even make it seem like it'll work is if everybody is in. Yeah. Well, my answer was like a more fundamental answer is that everybody believes that their idea is the right one and that everybody should do that because obviously it's the right idea. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but then like he kind of explained what he was asking me a little bit more, like you know, what is this underlying idea that like people think that that things that people own they don't deserve or or whatever you know yeah. like what what is this underlying idea that makes them think that 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 they're entitled to something that somebody else worked for right like yeah and uh so i've been thinking about this a lot since then cuz i didn't have a good answer at the time um cuz i i think it's multifaceted i i think that there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on. So I asked you this question earlier today. What What is your <laughs> response? I mean, like basically what I just told you, like mm -hmm. that's people, we do live today in, in a much more entitled society. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I don't know exactly why that is or what's caused that, but, and maybe it's just, maybe that's just my perception of it, but it just seems to me people in general are more, just seem more entitled. And I don't know why that is. Like, I don't understand, but, yeah. you, but you see it all the time. Like mm -hmm. just even in like everyday life, like where, where I, where I work and stuff, like people just, there's this sense of entitlement that I should just be able to have these things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, well, and it's pushed from a lot of different directions as well. I mean, it, it comes from, um, public education. It comes from, uh, the entertainment industry, movies and, and books and 
TV shows and everything else, this idea, like you'll see in, uh, you know, unless it's like this kind of post op post apocalyptic or dystopian kind of, you know, future, like anything like so many of the, um, the you know, future set programs end up being where this, with this idea that, um, everything's provided yeah. And the people do what they want to do and, you know, so on, except for the, you know, a few people that have gotten left out and they're trying to overthrow something or whatever. Yeah. This is also one of the strange things about this is that I see in a lot of it, there's a, um, there's an undercurrent of libertarianism or anarchism in it, yeah. um, where essentially the, the good guys are the people that are trying to overthrow this kind of authoritarian, um, these authoritarian underpinnings of whatever the society is that provides everything to everybody. Yeah. Which yeah. I, I think is funny. And I don't know that they even realize that they're doing <laughs> that it. That is there. Um, yeah. But, but I, I mean, there's so many problems with that idea. And, and of course, all you got to do really is look at history. You don't have to look at the future. Yeah. Um, you know, communism always ends with starvation and genocide everywhere. Yeah. It's been tried everywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, and, um, I am I know I'm kind of jumping around because, you know, very associative for me. But so, so I had a friend uh, that I played cards with years ago. Yeah. Um, I haven't I haven't talked to him really, I guess, since the card shop closed. But um, so it's been a couple of years. But I I really like this guy. He's a smart guy. Um, He's fun to talk to. He's funny. And he uh, he was uh, like a hardcore socialist. Yeah. And like really believed that, you know, all this stuff could be provided and that, you know, profit was a bad thing. And that's something that I'll come back to, too. But um, I remember asking him one day, uh, I said, well, OK, so. In the last 20 years, do you think that there's been an increase in poverty or a decrease in poverty? Yeah. And he was like, oh, obviously an increase. I was like, I mean, worldwide. Yeah. And he was like, no, yeah, uh, absolutely. An increase in poverty. I'm like, well, you're dead wrong yeah right <laughs> like absolutely wrong there have been tens of millions maybe hundreds of millions of people pulled out of poverty yeah. uh in the last 20 years because of the liberalization of markets in india and china yeah not the communization of, of yeah, markets the opposite. but the yeah, yeah the liberalization of markets and a freer market in india and china yeah um has pulled tens of millions of people out of poverty yeah uh and the truth is there's less poverty in this country too well, there is. But um, he was like, there's no way that that's true. I was like, well, just go go do the research, man. Go look <laughs> it up. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's, it's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think that there's, well, like, a lot of it is just a misunderstanding of how markets work. My um, my experience in just talking with people, because I've, I've known quite a few people over the years at this point mm -hmm. that are just like what you're saying, true believers in socialism, think mm -hmm. that there's enough money out there, enough if we just tax everybody and we do it right, mm -hmm. that, that it could be different this time yeah. is, is kind of like the way I portray it. And um, it what I've just found talking to them is they're just, the, well, for one, there's a just not a good understanding of economics. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's really kind of, and, and it, it's irritating talking to people like that, at least for me, because like they want the right thing. Like they want, yeah. they don't want people to starve. They want, and, and so anytime you start arguing or debating with them, it always goes back to that. Well, you just want people to starve. You just want people on the mm -hmm. streets. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I want the opposite of that. We just disagree on the road to get there. Yeah. And, and I'm right. And, and I'm right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like tons of economics will support what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and history. And history will support what yeah. I'm trying to tell you here. You have more data on my side than you have on yours. Exactly. Um, I, I think that, you know, a lot of it is, the more I've been thinking about it, um, I think that a lot of it is kind of this like visceral rejection of competition and profit as being like evil or unsavory things. Yeah. Right. Um, and... Yeah. So uh, I've been thinking more like, all right, so how do we dispel these ideas? Because because they're wrong, too. Yeah. Um, but it is kind of pervasive, I think, um, particularly yeah. profit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, the, you know, profit means that you're taking advantage of somebody else yeah. for your own gain. Um, and I would say that the, the first thing to point out is that every action that everybody takes is for their own gain. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. <laughs> like you only do something because you at least perceive that the results of taking that action will put you in a better position than where you were before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why you did it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, what profit does is, and so, but that doesn't, rec- that doesn't mean that every action you take is taking advantage of somebody else. Yeah. Like you very often do things that benefit others because you think they'll benefit you too. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the, the that's how the market kind of operates. Yeah. Like that, it's a that's mutual really gain the core. for both sides. Mm-hmm. That, that is really the core idea of a free market. Yeah. Um, the, and if you want to look at it from a more technical standpoint, uh, profit tells producers or entrepreneurs um, what to make yeah. and where it needs to go. Exactly. And it incentivizes them to give you what you want. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and I was reading um, Sheldon Richman uh, recently. He's got a bunch of articles like trying to um, address some of these ideas. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll come back to that story in a minute. Um, when we talk about cooperation, don't let me forget to come okay. back to that when we talk about cooperation yeah. and competition. Um, but, uh, in terms of profit, like all of these profit motive things. All right. So let's, let's say, for example, that, um, something that somebody really needs yeah. food, one item of food, yeah, whatever it happens to be potatoes. I like potatoes. I like potatoes too. Potatoes Even a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, Even drink so, them if you want to. Like, uh, if James has a potato, yeah. Um, and he wants to sell it, and Julie will pay a dollar for that potato. Yeah. Then and James sells Julie the the potato for a dollar. Then one of the things that we know from that is that the dollar was more valuable to James than the potato. Yeah. And the potato was more valuable to Julie than the dollar. Exactly. Like everybody won. Yep. Now the other thing that you can uh, you can assume from that is that the potato was more valuable to Julie than the dollar and everything else that she could do with that dollar. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So, like that was the best thing that she could do with the dollar or she wouldn't have yeah. bought the potato. Or she would have got an orange. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but then for some reason, people think that it's a problem if James knows a place that he can buy potatoes for 75 cents. Yeah. And then go sell them to Julie for a dollar. Yeah. Like this makes him an evil person. Yeah. But he's still providing Julie exactly what she wants. Yeah. She could have went and got that orange. And he, yeah. <laughs> and, and he's got an incentive to give Julie what she wants by being able to make 25 cents off of every potato that he sells. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing that he does economically yeah. is that by buying potatoes in a place where he can buy them for 75 cents and selling them in a place where he can sell them for a dollar, yeah. he's equalizing the price across these two places. Yeah. Because the more potatoes he takes out of the cheap potato place and yeah. the more money he puts into it, the more demand he creates for potatoes in that place it puts pressure on prices to rise. Yeah. But the more potatoes that he sells in the other place huh. puts pressure on prices to go down. Yeah. Because the supply is increased. Exactly. So uh, over time the the prices reach equilibrium. Yeah. Right? So but he only has, you know, this brief amount of time that he can do this, but this is this is a wonderful thing that he's doing. Yeah. Absolutely. It's benefiting everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess except for the people that were also selling potatoes for a dollar in the other place. But and the only time that this really becomes an issue is when you start getting the government involved. Mm-hmm. I, I have to go back to it. Like that's where that's where the issues start to arise and you end up with this like corporatism type thing where, that we have now yeah. where the government got involved and was like, oh, well, wait a minute. We mm-hmm. got to tax you here or, or even worse. Um, we're going to subsidize potatoes in the dollar place so they can, the price yeah, will go down. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. And that's actually a really important point to make is that, that these discussions of economics that we have are at least in, you know, when we're talking about Austrian school economics, um, and generally the supply and demand stuff and so forth, we're talking about in a free market, yeah. which we don't have, which is not what we currently have. Yeah. yeah. There's a, I mean, Lockheed Martin yeah. does not exist in a free market. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Lockheed Martin um, isn't providing people what they need. It, yeah. there, is no, there is no consumer demand for Lockheed Martin. No. 
Yeah. Um, Lockheed Martin gets all of their money from the government, who doesn't have to earn that money. No. They just create it or steal it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and essentially, Lockheed Martin's existence steals from all of us. Um, and it's production that could go into something that would be more valuable to a consumer. Yeah. Instead, it goes into production of things that, you know, kill people halfway around the world. Yeah. And you can't even make the argument that it's for defense because it would be, yeah. it would be one thing yeah. to be like, well, we, we do have to defend this country. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we're offense. Yeah. I would also make the argument if we didn't spend so much time meddling around in other people's countries, we would need less defense of this country. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we <laughs> stayed here and just defended this country, which this country doesn't need a lot of defending. Like, I mean, yeah. outside invaders, Canada and Mexico, I don't think they're threats. Yeah. Not as of today. I don't know. The Canadians are. <laughs> yeah. But, you, you always keep an eye on them, but I'm just yeah, saying. Don't like, trust those Canadians. <laughs> um, and the Mexicans, too, as far as I'm concerned. They're but, pretending to be nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and so, uh, you know, to, to come back around to it, like the other thing is the competition issue, that, yeah. that competition necessarily means that somebody loses and, and so forth. Yeah. And I guess in some sense that's true, but when you're talking about market economics, competition, competition is good for and, the consumer. Well, it is good for the consumer and, and, and competition and cooperation. This, okay. So this is going to be your Sheldon Richmond okay. um, story. Yeah. Uh, so... He's making the case that competition and cooperation are essentially two sides of the same coin. Um, but the example he gives is if he goes into a market and there's two people selling shoes in this market. Yeah. And you go in as a consumer to buy shoes. And you're only going to buy shoes from one of these guys. Then they are competing with each other. For your business. To cooperate with you. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. And, you know, it, it creates, an, uh, in this case, it creates an incentive, again, to provide better services, like the competition between two people that produce the same thing to cooperate with the most consumers um, creates an incentive for both of them to run better businesses. Yeah. Um, or redirect their, their uh, resources somewhere else where they would be of more value. Either way, it streamlines the economy, it cuts out inefficiencies, and it creates more of what the consumers actually want. And it it creates a, it it kind of inhibits companies from getting too big, mm -hmm. because that's the other fear: is if you don't have the government interfering, that all of these corporations are just going to be massive and take over everything. Yeah, but that you, <laughs> but it's it, government it interference that creates that problem that, exactly my yeah. point is that without the government these corporations can't get that big yeah they just they're just not able to for any monopoly to survive it's got to do it's got to be one of two things it either provides the best service at the lowest price yeah or it has government on its side there's no other way. Like it just it's there's it just doesn't work. And I, I've never understood the idea, like the you know communistic or socialistic idea, where we're so afraid of monopoly that what we're going to do is we're going to give monopoly to the government. Yeah, like <laughs> like the most dishonest actor is who we're going to give yeah. it to. <laughs> um, government services are the monopolistic services. Yeah. Um, or government supported services. Like we only have one power provider here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's enforced by the government. Yeah. Um, and what that means is that without competition, now that, you know, there's rules in place to try and keep prices low and so forth. By the way, the, my rates went up this month. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that one out there for, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, the, of course the results of that, you see some of the results of that in California, yeah. right? Where they have the brownouts and so forth. Um, or yeah. you have the, the issue in, in Texas with the freeze a couple of years ago yeah. um, where the, the government enforced monopoly resulted in um, just a lack of improvement in the system and the infrastructure um, and an in inability to switch over to anything else when something went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, you need, oh gosh, and Venezuela was such a great example with the oil production. Oh yeah. Right. So they were, you know, one of the most prosperous nations in South America until the communist revolution there. Yeah. Um, and what did uh, it take a decade for it to collapse? Something like that. And yeah. part of it was that by, you know, this like government control of the petroleum industry, um, 
there was just a lack of uh, a lack of improvement in infrastructure. Um, it became more and more inefficient, and uh, and become became less profitable. Now, luckily for them, oil is just expensive, so they they've been able to continue to survive, but they've lost so much wealth in the process. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, they were eating zoo animals at one time. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and of course, more recently, yeah. you know, with the uh, with all the protests and the. Yeah. You know, the internal collapse, like, um, I don't know if you can draw the line directly to uh, government control of the petroleum industry in that case, but yeah. um, you probably you could probably make a decent case, honestly. But, um, you know, my my point being that uh, it is it is competition and cooperation between um, different uh, producers um, that incentivize improvements uh, in infrastructure, in efficiency, in the amount of labor required. Um, I read something recently, actually this might have been in Sheldon Richmond also, um, that uh, I, I can't remember what the dates were now, but essentially um, they were comparing how much labor an individual needed to put in in equivalency for a chicken. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. And so like some hundred and some years ago or whatever, uh, the average person um, had to do roughly two and a half hours of labor to get a chicken. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To afford a chicken to, or however, you know, like yeah. two oh, and to, a half hours of labor equivalency in exchange for the price of a chicken. Okay. My bad. Right? I thought you meant to like eat a chicken. No, like no, to get no. it ready to eat. No, no, no. Yeah, a couple hours. No, although that's right. probably included um, <laughs> in the calculation, but no. Okay, uh, my bad. And that um, that more recently it was something like fourteen minutes. Oh wow! And the 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 point of that was that that extra two hours and fifteen minutes. Yeah. Is now essentially a public wealth. Yeah. That each individual to get their chicken has to put so much less time in. Yeah. Um, that, you know, what they are, the value of their time is so much greater than, than that, that all of this extra, um, efficiency that's been produced over time in how to get a chicken from the egg to the plate or whatever, yeah. um, that this is all now, uh, to the benefit of the public in general. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, because it's used for things that are, are more valuable, essentially. Absolutely. Did that make sense? I don't know that that made sense. I tried to articulate that well. I don't know that I did. Yeah. Um, All right. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. Well, it, if you're listening and you're like, what the hell is he talking about? Send me a message. I'm sure I can do it better on paper. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think that, you know, a lot of the issue, especially from the socialist communists, is this, this concern that it's somehow immoral. Yeah. That like market forces are immoral. Yeah. Um, and, and what I'm trying to do here is make the case that actually they're to the benefit of all. Absolutely. Um, and I would hope that anything that's to the benefit of all is not immoral. Well, and it, it does always, always amaze me too, because, so we live in such a huge government, big, just, um, country that it seems to me like some politician along the way would be like, man, like, like a president would be mm -hmm. like, man, if we just like reel some of this back and really let the free market just work, like couldn't, well, not only would the country be more profitable or, or prosperous, mm -hmm. but it would be good politically. But there's just too many special interests, I think, for that to happen. I think that um, the last thing that a government wants to do is show people that it is not needed. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's from the government side, though. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about like somebody like Trump, just for mm -hmm. instance, even though he's not this person, he's quite the opposite. Yeah. Um, but just say that he wasn't, that he took office again and just like completely deregulated and just guts stuff and, yeah. and really tries like embraces some of these Austrian economics um, and the prosperity we could see there, like that would have to be good for him politically. Uh, yeah, you would think so. I don't know that they even see it though. Yeah. Um, I don't and, know. And maybe I, I'm not sure maybe that's, that. maybe that's the correct answer. I mean, my, my assumption has always been that there's just too many special interests and too much money mm -hmm. involved that won't let that happen. 
Because he has this... Uh, that's another thing, actually, probably to point out, is that I think that a lot of people believe that this stuff works because they don't look at it holistically. They, they look at, they're looking at single issues. They're looking at the fact that people have really high rent costs. Yeah. And they're not understanding that they're just, high rent costs actually draw other entrepreneurs and producers into the field to produce more housing so that rent costs can come down. Yeah. No, all they see is the, the one thing and then they approach it. <laughs> well, what can we do to change this one thing yeah. immediately? And, and back to your point from earlier, I will also, you know, make it a point of saying that the idea that it pulls other producers and entrepreneurs into the field to produce more housing for people to bring prices down, yeah. that doesn't happen very much here because there are so many governmental restrictions on where and how property can be built. Yeah. Um, so, like, you're not seeing that so much in the U.S., not because the, the market is failing, but because it isn't a free market. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Once again, the government mm -hmm. is stepping in to screw this up. Yeah, and and Trump did see some of this, but he's he's blind to other parts. Yeah. Um. So he was uh he was in favor of deregulating a bunch of in industry stuff. Oh yeah. Um. And he did he actually did some deregulating while he was in office, yeah. but he also started a trade war with China that doesn't benefit <laughs> any of us. Well, that's that's the thing that popped in my head as I was saying that is mm -hmm. that you know because that hurts everybody. Yeah. It, um, and he also was in favor of keeping interest rates at zero. Yeah. Once again, hurts everybody. <laughs> but it's really good for a, a oh, property. Short term. Yeah. Well, I was going to say for a real estate guy. Well, yeah. Yeah. Zero interest is fantastic. Yeah, that's true. Um, Which is the angle so he, he would be looking at it from because yeah. that's what he's done. Yeah. He sees it only from his own narrow perspective. Yeah. And, and of course, most politicians have never even had a real job. Like he, we have some benefit of having uh, Trump in office because at least he actually had to make a profit and a payroll and so forth yeah. in his life. <laughs> exactly. Um, Joe Biden never has. Yeah. There's most of these guys have never had to do any of that. Yeah. So. Um, so, you know, even people that I really like, like, uh, Thomas Massey, yeah. I don't know that Thomas Massey has had a real job. No, but he does, he is, and he's like graduated from MIT or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So, he's I mean, like, got a master's it, it, from MIT, I think, in some kind of engineering. And at least he's yeah. a smart guy and, yeah. you know, and, and he, he brings value to the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but most of these guys have just been like attorneys or something. Yeah. And they're not really bringing a lot of value to the conversation. Yeah. Most of the guys have law degrees and have never actually done, done anything. a real, yeah, yeah. Any, had a real job. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, like you even have a benefit of somebody like Rand Paul, uh, who had been a practicing doctor. Oh yeah. Um, before he was a Senator, he's had to, well, he's, I don't know. He might've been part of a group, but I'm sure he had to uh, pay some attention to like, mm -hmm. you know, how much time he had assistance on the payroll and things like yeah. that, you know? And, and he still graduated medical school. So, yeah. so, well, but my point to that is... Well, I mean, if you have a law degree, you had to graduate law school. Law school yeah. is tough, too. But what I, the point I was going to make, though, is somebody who graduated medical school the past couple of years could bring some value to the conversation of what was going on in this country. Yeah. Well, he tried. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like, those yeah. those are the type of people we should be listening to. <laughs> it's always funny listening to those clips of him and Fauci going back and forth um, in yeah. the Senate in the Senate hearings, because I think what a lot of people don't recognize from that is that, um, Rand Paul saw a hell of a lot more patients than Fauci because exactly. Fauci has never seen a patient. Yeah. He's not, he's not that type of doctor. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is that type of doctor, <laughs> but he's never done but, it. Though. But yeah. He went from medical school to academia to government. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it, so. I don't know. We're listening to the wrong experts. That certainly seems to be the case. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> uh, I, well, that's all I've got for now. Do you yeah. want to add anything? No, um, not a whole lot. So I don't know. So did we ever really nail down why people think it's all right to take other people's money? I don't know that we can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> somebody at the office today, I was talking about this, uh, said to me, well, you got to look at who is making those cases, too. Yeah. He's like, it's it's almost invariably somebody who has nothing to give. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, wow. You know, they just feel entitled to something else. I, I think that there is a real, you know, again, I, I think that a big part of it is just a real misunderstanding of how economics works. Yeah. Like going back to those future societies where um, everything is provided and so people can just do what they want. And we live in the future. Right. <laughs> um, like, I mean, think about that practically, how that would work. Yeah. There's a lot of things that need to be done that yeah. people don't want to do. Yeah. So if everybody can just do what they want, yeah. who picks up the trash? Yeah, exactly. I mean, just as a simple example, like yeah. would anybody be a janitor if, yeah. or a custodial engineer, whatever we're calling custodial them. Custodial engineer, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there wasn't money in it, like, yeah. you know, going around and picking up trash, there's actually good money in because yeah. people don't want to do it. And they have to draw people to the job. Somehow. Hey, that's a government job, <laughs> at least in some areas. Well, it is in some areas. <laughs> um, there's at least a government monopoly. Well, there's a gov government monopoly for sure. But yeah. in some areas, I think it's, uh, I mean, I think in my area, I'm pretty sure those are, those are city workers in Robertsdale. Are they? Yeah. They're not all over the the county, though. There's areas, I think, they use, like, waste management or something. Yeah, I, I remember I used to take, uh, I used to work at this call center where we took claims, and there were a couple of different, um, like, sanitation companies that, yeah. that we waste took claims management for. Waste management was the big is, one. Is the one that's around here. But, um I don't know. Robert Stills weird. All of our stuff is owned by the city. Yeah. Like, hmm. Interesting. It's, it's different. Um, big government. Big city government. Yeah. Big city government, <laughs> which is better than a big federal government. Yeah. Oh, I'll take it every time. Because you can move easily exactly. down the road to Loxley or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Yeah, that would be a horrible decision. <laughs> to <but>. Foley. <laughs> no better. Gulf Shores. Okay, now now you're talking. I'll just be at the. I couldn't live in Gulf Shores. I'd be at the beach all day. Yeah, be a beach bum. <laughs> beach bum. Um, not today. You wouldn't have. <laughs> be be a um, a bar bum. Oh yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I could do that yeah. for at least a few years till I died. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, I got now you got me all sidetracked and I can't remember. It was, there was like a nice closing there. I totally ah, lost the, it. I throw you off track. That's all right. It's oh, all right. Wow. This is what you're here for, right? That's right. <laughs> Keep you off track. <laughs> you know, originally, by the way, I just, uh, to the listeners, yeah. originally, Liberty Larry's role on this podcast was supposed to be primarily to keep me on track. Yeah. <laughs> that really kind of works the opposite <laughs> way from what I've seen. He's, he was supposed to, when I start going down those weird rabbit hole tangent you things back. yeah <laughs> get me back on topic but he doesn't do that at all no he like fact, baits just, me into the rabbit hole <laughs> exactly i don't know why it's just in my nature yeah i don't know what to say well it, i think it works anyway yeah, yeah. um so and if you have any comments on that <laughs> michael at the liberty mike yeah. .com. um i guess i don't have anything else we're closing in on an hour here anyway so okay. uh yeah. we may just stretch that yeah I think it was good. I think Economic, so economics is always fun. It's a yeah. it's a interesting thing that I just don't feel like people understand well enough. I, I agree. Oh, and that does remind me, um, like what you were saying earlier about why do people think that they're entitled to other people's stuff? I think that they they look at um, acquisition as somehow malevolent. Yeah. Right, and that there isn't a real appreciation. You know, the story is, oh, you know, the owner doesn't have to do anything. He just lives off the backs of the labor of all the people underneath him that have to do all the work and he doesn't have to do anything. I think that there's a that's a, a real misunderstanding of how entrepreneurship. Works. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, I, my cousin was a, uh, a building contractor um, for a while. And when he first started his business. Now he'd been a, he'd been the worker for a yeah. while, like he'd been a guy out there like hammer and stuff, doing and, the doing you know, the work, yeah, carrying junk out to the road, you know, learning the field, right? Yeah. Um, but eventually he started his own business, and when he first started his own business, you know, it took some time to like really build up business. Oh yeah, and what he came to realize really quickly was that he's the last person to get paid. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like he's got all those people working underneath him and, you know, various other like secondary contractors and so forth for specific jobs and so forth. He's got to pay all them first. Oh, yeah. As he's collecting money for whatever building project he's on, he's paying it out yeah. to all the people that are that are doing the work. 
Um, and, uh, and of course he's, you know, doing a different kind of work. He's, he's managing it all and coordinating it all and marketing at the same time. And, you know, yeah, people really don't understand how much a lot of that, I mean, that's, that's more mental work. Like it's just, Mm -hmm. it's like you can sit at a desk all day and be drained after doing that type of thing. Yeah. And it's hustle work too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, like particularly the the marketing stuff and, you know, and like coordinating various contractors because well, things have to be done. Like if you're working on a building, things have to be done in a particular order. Yeah. And you have to arrange when people arrive so that they just build so off they, of each other. Exactly. Right? Like this can be very hard to do, especially when the people that you're contracting don't work directly for you. And you can't say you have to be here on this day because you may get a call the day before um, something. And the guy says, you know, your plumber says, well, I can't come in to, uh, to put those pipes in tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you know, I had something come up, there was a big emergency at this other place, you know, some Art kind of disaster rain. or whatever, and I can't come do it. Yeah. Okay, fine. Well, but now I've got to delay the slab being laid Yeah. because I need the pipes in before I can put the concrete down yeah. and I have to have the concrete down before I can start putting the frame up yeah. and I <laughs> have yeah. to have the frame it's, up before. I, so now you're like pushing all these things down the line. You're trying to rearrange everybody. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Um, and, but yeah, the, the main thing that he discovered very quickly, besides that he's working these really long weeks, yeah. um, you know, trying to make sure that everything got done is that he was the poor person. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and in the end, um, you know, eventually he built up enough of business that he did pretty well with it, but especially at the but very it beginning start of that, that way, yeah. it was a huge risk for him. Absolutely. I, and he put all of his savings into it to get it started in the first place. Yeah. So he didn't have any option, but to succeed. Yeah. You know, and that's that's what a lot of people don't understand, especially with small businesses, Mm -hmm. is that people put their life into that. And Mm -hmm. then once they make it, it's like, well, they're they're just a fat cat. Yeah. But what did it take for them to get to that point? Mm -hmm. And how much did they risk to get there? You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, And they deserve some reward for that. Well, yeah. I mean, that's (laughs) that. I mean, they built that, you Mm -hmm. know, um. And they and just like kind of what you were saying, like you're the last person to get paid. Like you've got to take care of the people that are around you. Or you're not going to be there long e- either, right? You know, I mean, you mm-hmm. got to have people working for you, and they're not working for free. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, it, and you know, it's a it's a mutual benefit. Um, all those people underneath him that were working for him, they had employment because of what he was doing too. Absolutely. Um, all those people in that apartment building, they have a place to live. It may be expensive, but you know why they're paying it is because yeah. they agreed to. Yeah, absolutely. Like if they could do better they for would. less, they would. Yeah, exactly. So, um e- even if All right, I guess this is the 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 final point, the thing to remember about all this. Whenever there's these exchanges, it, it is mutual benefit. Um that each person got what they wanted more than what they had. Yeah. Everybody improved their situation. Yeah. But the the underlying fact is that everybody that's buying something wants to pay less for it. Yeah. And everybody that's selling something wants to get more for it. Yeah. But you've come to you some kind to of come, compromise. Yeah, exactly. And you you guys have settled on a price that you're both willing to to engage in the transaction for. Yeah. And you've done that because the market that's the that became the market price. Yeah. Like the market kind of decides that price. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. I mean, we could yeah. We need to wrap it up because we, we could right. definitely keep going on this. Yeah. Um, we'll come back to economics. We always do. Oh, yeah. There's no avoiding it, especially right now. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, we plan to be back here in a week. There's nothing, nothing conflicting that you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, we plan to be back here in a week. Uh, in the meantime, follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean and or Podbean, preferably all. Uh, you can like, comment, share. Please like, comment, and share. That's what I should say. Absolutely. Please like, comment, and share. Tell your friends. Um, you know, you can review on iTunes and Podbean. I think. Yeah. Um, there's of course the old thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, we've been fighting with YouTube a little bit recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're still there. Yeah. Things are still there. We had some stuff censored and taken down on Facebook too, so there's yeah. always that. They don't, yeah. they don't really like us anywhere. It seems we should, like we might have to at some point. We may need to find alternatives. We may be on Rumble and <laughs> I don't know what's the Facebook alternative. I don't even know. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. In the meantime, uh, yeah, 
In the meantime, you can follow us on those places that we already are. Absolutely. And if you have suggestions, let me know. (laughs) You can contact me at michael at thelibertymike.com. And there's, of course, always our website where you can find everything, uh, which is thelibertymike.com. Yeah. Um, Not not a good chance that they're going to take that down. No, no. Hmm. Haven't had any complaints from our hosting service. So far. So far. I haven't heard about them being a problem with that kind of thing, but. You know, we'll find out. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll be back next Thursday, probably, or Friday. We'll be that back next week next anyway. Next week, for sure. Um, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.